Welcome to my video. My name is Lin Guo. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Oklahoma. I'm presenting our paper, Designing the Customer Order Decoupling Point to Facilitate Mass Customization. What is the Customer Order Decoupling Point, and CODP for short? Essentially, CODP is the differentiation point in the supply chain that separates the push and pull strategy. The part of the supply chain upstream from the CODP is in the make to stock production mode. Everything is produced based on the forecast, whereas the part of the supply chain downstream from the CODP is in the make to order production mode. Only after an order is intaken can the production begin. There are several examples of the CODP for different goods. For coffee, the CODP is at the retailer's uh, coffee house as the stock in the form as the processed coffee beans. When a customer orders a certain type of coffee, the coffee maker at the coffee house starts making it. As to an electronic cabinet, the CODP is advanced to the components of the regional distribution center. Because there can be various configurations, only a customer places an order of a specific configuration can the goods start to be prepared. But the standard components can be prepared in advance in inventory before the ordering. As to a cargo ship, the CODP is further advanced, very close to the raw market. Because the standard components are quite basic and the customer can wait. The positioning of CODP for product depends on the configurability and order conf frequency of the product and the easiness of different formats uh, of the storage. Why is it important to position the CODP in the right place as right forms? Because of the challenges in the supply chain. There are multiple evolving conflicting goals in the supply chain, and in different circumstances, the priority of the goals change. Another challenge is the multiple types of uncertainty we need to manage. As any complex system, a supply chain encounters four types of uncertainty. First two types are the variation in parameters and variables, which in the supply chain is the uncertainty in demand side and supply side. Type three is the uncertainty in model structure, including anything that changes dimensionality, mathematical relationships among the variables, and the fidelity of the model natural disasters, for example. Type four is the bullwhip effect, which is the uncertainty we create while we try to manage the first three types of uncertainty. We also encounter challenges in mass customization. Usually, the configurability of a product has a negative correlation with its operational efficiency, but in mass customization, we want to optimize both of them. After a literature review, we identified two limitations in the existing methods. First, the uncertainties are full of assumptions, which, which can be wrong. And second, they are all seeking optimal solutions, which are relatively sensitive to uncertainties. Therefore, we propose the formulation exploration framework to manage uncertainties. Through the interactions among the model formulation, solution space exploration, and physical world dynamics capturing, we can improve our model, solution, and physical system iteratively. In this way, we can make our solution space relatively robust to uncertainties. We used to test the problem in the automobile industry, positioning the CODP for a car part. We have three players in this supply chain a supplier, a manufacturer, and a retailer. There are six candidates for the CODP. From upstream to the downstream are raw material of the supplier, SRM, the finished good at the supplier, SFG, and the raw material and finished good at the manufacturer and retailer, respectively, MRM, MFG, RRM, and RFG. We have three goals in this supply chain, maximize the profit, maintain the service level, and minimize the variance of reliability among the players, or in other words, the equality among the players. The variables include the CODP as, they create, uh, as discrete variables, and the production volume and the reliability of each player as continuous variables. 
The constraints are the number of CODP, the range of service level, the lower bound of the profit, and the range of the unit price and lead time. We implement the model on, uh, on this side. And here are the goals, the constraints, and the variables. Here's our result in each iteration. First, we identify the shifting cost at the manufacturer is the bottleneck, so we take actions to relax the constraint. Then, we identify the holding cost at the manufacturer becomes the next bottleneck, so we take actions to reduce it. The next bottleneck is the transportation cost from the manufacturer to the retailer, so we address it accordingly, so on and so forth. At the end, by implementing seven design scenarios to represent seven different priorities of the goals, we find that there are two points can be the CODP, MRM, the raw materials at the manufacturer, and RFG, the finished good at the retailer. In different phases of the product life cycle, we can position the CODP at the two points accommodating with the different priority of the profit, service level, and player's equality. In summary, in the introduction decline phase, the CODP is at the MRM. The make-to-order part is longer, whereas in the growth and maturity phase, the CODP is at the RFG. The whole supply chain is a make-to-stock supply chain. In summary, with the formulation exploration framework, we can iteratively position the CODP. And through the product life cycle, we can provide customized products with near mass production efficiency. As to future work, we can incorporate new technologies such as the Internet of Things to capture the data in a real-time manner. Thank you for your listening. Welcome to explore my website using this QR code.